In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you three ways to ascend into what is called a 5D level of consciousness without leaving behind your dog or your grandma. You don't gotta do that. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm gonna be going a little bit more down the esoteric rabbit hole, okay? This video might challenge some of your beliefs about the way reality works, maybe some of your beliefs about how things are. However, I believe that this video might plant some seeds that in the future you may look back on and been like, whoa, maybe there was something cool about that. And this is something that I've actually been passionate about for a long time is understanding ascension. I believe that right now on the planet we're going from an ascension from one level of consciousness into a new level of consciousness. I believe that at a deep level, it's one of the main reasons there's so many people here on the planet right now, is to go through this shift in consciousness. It's just that most people aren't aware of it yet, but I believe in the distant future, in the near future, that more and more people are gonna be aware of this and awake to it and open to it as well. So first off, the thing I wanna share with you is for this process of understanding it, I just have to very quickly explain 3D to 5D. Now, the 3D level of consciousness is and includes what we call duality. It's a, a perspective of separation where we say, I am this and you are that. You could in a way say, we, we are eternal spiritual beings living temporary human experiences. We have this thing in our reality that we call the ego. The ego is an avatar that we use in this physical reality that in a way is a way that we interpret reality through the five senses. In 3D reality, we identify mainly with that of the avatar. We think this is the avatar that I am. I can absolutely see that this is who I am and that that is who you are. And we're able to see that separation. Now, if you were to expand the scope of perception though, almost like you have a, a camera and you were to expand it back and to see more and more of the picture, you may eventually see that the whole entire planet Earth is one being that is flowing through the universe. Now that, you can then see, oh, it's, we're all one, we're all connected. But in this individual game of separation, we think that we're all separate. Now, a 3D level of consciousness is when we're very, very involved and very uh, triggered by duality. Good, bad, light, dark, up, down. We identify with it. Things are very heavy normally in 3D reality. We need to try really hard to change things. Things appear to go by slower. In 3D reality, time goes by much slower because we're not really necessarily living in the present moment. Now, we come here, we forget who we are, and I believe that the main purpose of this lifetime especially is us remembering who we are. And part of that remembering who we are is also tapping into this 5D level of consciousness. 5D state of consciousness is about unity consciousness, realizing that we're all connected. In 5D consciousness, we also have abilities that we may not be aware of in the 3D level of consciousness. We can only see within a certain bandwidth of information. That's another square. <laughs> only a certain bandwidth of information. We can hear a certain decibel range. We can see a certain light frequency. And even though maybe that's the case in 5D as well, to a certain extent, we may have more ability to perceive of more of that. So it's almost like maybe that scope is in a little bit bigger. Instead of that little box, it's in a bigger box. So there's also, we feel more connected to other people. When you hear me, when you see me show that state, that uh, levels of consciousness as well, I'll go ahead and have Daniel put it right there. Daniel is the editor. You'll see the, um, you'll see that of shame, fear, guilt, anger, neutrality. Then you'll see that of willingness, reasoning, love, joy, peace, enlightenment. 5D level of consciousness is when you mainly exist in the levels of love, reasoning, love, and above. That's mainly where we are headed and where we can be. Now. There's a common misconception, and there's a misconception that ascension, even though part of ascension as well, let's go a little bit more down the rabbit hole as well. When it comes to ascension, we are activating what is called our light body. Our light body, or our Merkaba, or Merkaba, is something that we're all connected to as well. And we are all multi-dimensional beings having temporary human experiences that this is who we are, we are the avatar. That will sound crazy, by the way, to the avatar. The ego, that's why I'm asking you not to just listen with your ego, but listen more with your intuition. Listen more with your heart as well. And 
this is about that we activate that the more we raise our frequency. And when we do that as well, it's almost like 5D. We start to also merge with the dream world in a way. Reality becomes much more dreamlike. Things are heavy over here. Dream, you know, the dream is more flexible. In a way, reality starts to become much more malleable, much more flexible. And I believe that that is something that we will experience in this lifetime as we go through this shift in consciousness. Now, there's this common misunderstanding though, that when we are in the 3D state and go into the 5D state, that we ascend and then rapture up into non-physical. I believe that we are here, and if you study the work of Dolores Cannon, the Law of One, and other material, you'll see, it's about a physical transmutation of energy. We are going from a carbon-based body to a crystalline-based body. So that is a quickening, and the crystalline-based body is higher in frequency. That's why a lot of people are becoming aware of their diet right now, too. So I wanted to share, it's also something that's meant to happen physically. So you don't have to worry about grandma. You don't have to worry about your dog, and your dog is more connected to the earth and less resistance to the ego anyways. But grandma's gonna be okay. Everyone's gonna be okay. This is about you doing your inner work, because as you change, so does the reality that you experience. In a way, you can think of this ascension into 5D as a splitting of parallel reality experiences. So the more you are on the timeline you want to be on, the better. So first off, the first thing that you must do in order to descend into that of the higher levels of consciousness like 5D is have no fear. Let go of fear. Fear will keep you in the 3D. When you look at the news, you know, sometimes you become aware that yes, the news is negative things, but if you continue to watch the news, you may be putting yourself into a certain frequency that you don't prefer. At the other side of that, there may be certain people that trigger you. And the more you react to it, the more that you can get entrained with it. It's about learning observation. That's why meditation can be so powerful. In general though, this is about not also having anger towards those that control reality. When we think that there's a certain level of control on the planet, whether it's true that you know, the money system's not backed by gold or something like that. The key is knowing that this system was put into place by us so that we could go in, incarnate into this game, this illusion, that, so that we could then remember who we are. When I say illusion, it gets a little dangerous because the experience, I believe, is real, but, but beyond that, it's only real because we believe it to be real in a way. And especially we have a mass consensus, a mass consciousness that's believing in it. And we change our beliefs as a mass consciousness, that's when I think things are really begin to change. But the more fear and anger we have towards the government and the way things are, the more we keep that reality active within our vibration, the more we keep that separation alive. When we see even them as a part of us, even them, think about how compassionate some of these beings were. Some of these beings were so compassionate at a soul level that they incarnated into this reality to play the villain, to play the bad guy. And then we could come into here and be under a certain level of control, whether that's the financial system, whether that's the, uh, the media that projects all this negativity, whatever it is, so that we can then remember who we are and then go through this shift in consciousness. So in a way, by having that reframe, it makes it easier, but fear will keep us in that state of consciousness. So this isn't to be feared, it's about understanding that this is a part of the process and we're transmuting it by changing the meaning. So that's the first step to this process. The first way that you can go about it is completely let go of fear and understand that this is all perfect. It's all part of the process. We're all connected, even those villains. Things are more flexible. Every moment we're changing. Every moment we're changing. So what are we changing to? Now the way that Bashar explains this is that as time goes on, there's going to be more and more of a splitting of these different parallel reality timelines. So the idea is to get on the track you prefer to be on. Get on the track that you prefer to be on. Because if you're on a track you don't prefer to be on, you'll keep going with that momentum. Now as time goes on, you may find that you gravitate towards certain people more than others due to you raising your vibration. Certain people may kind of fall out of your life due to vibrational resonance. Nothing to be feared. It's just a part of the process. But if you're on a fearful timeline where you look at chemtrails and all these negative things, then it'll kind of, it'll keep you within that box. And this lifetime is about remembering that and waking up to that. Now, one of the best ways you can do this as well is through going through a process of self-healing. To ascend, you must heal. Think of it, we're all light beings. We all have an energetic field around our body. Any disturbance we have within our energetic field is keeping our vibration down. 
However, if we clear out that vibration, we then raise our frequency. One of the most powerful things that I found, I'll say it's healing, is a process called Ho'oponopono, which is four simple statements. I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me, thank you. You say these four statements over and over again, and you think of the people that you want to heal your relationships with, or even people that aren't getting it, and you just accept them for them not getting it, or just accept them for how they are. You change your vision of them, then many times you may find that they may actually come around. So if you're worried about grandma and you're worried about your dog, or you do hono pono pono on your grandma, that's not your grandma, <laughs> but as you do that, you then begin to heal yourself, your vision of them, because then you get even deeper. Is there even grandma? Or is, there is grandma. Grandma is a reflection of you though, as well. We're all connected from that 5D level of consciousness. So there is grandma, it's not like grandma's an illusion, but the separation between you is an illusion. It's really, you're connected to grandma. So as you do the inner work and you heal within yourself, you will also be helping other people around you. It's what we call light workers. And I believe that you are a light worker. You're waking up to this information now. You're at, in a way kind of the leading edge. Don't get too, sometimes that can be an egoic thing. Cause they're like, oh, I'm better. I'm more awake. It says we're all connected. You woke up now for a reason and you're aware of this information now for a reason, but ascension is about doing the inner work and healing yourself. Realize there really is no outer anything else anyways. It's all as you change your vision of your grandma, your grandma will change. Maybe. When I say maybe, it's because if you're attached to it, then many times it won't happen. But if you change your vision of your grandma, how you relate to grandma, and you uh, feel love for grandma, you may find that she comes around quicker than ever. She may not, but she may because you've changed your perception. So. Healing, Ho'oponopono, I'm gonna link that meditation below that I have. You listen to it while you're driving, you listen to it while you're cleaning your house, you listen to it in the background. That vibration begins to flow through your body and then you clear out these energetic blockages that are within your body. That will help you to make this shift into what we call the 5D. Now the last thing I wanna talk about, this is very, very important, is seriousness. You guys gotta take this very, 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 very serious. I don't even know how to spell serious right now. <laughs> serious. The star system. Actually, it's the opposite. Do not take this serious. Have fun with this process. Have fun with this ascension process. I've seen people, I used to be like this. When I first went through my awakening, I was that guy in a sauna that was meditating very seriously. And I was somebody that was taking it very, very seriously because I was very intense about whatever it is I'm into. That's kind of how I am now. I get very passionate about things, as you can see by the way I express myself. Now, at the same time, there's a certain way that if you're too serious about this, if you take this very, very seriously, that will keep you in low vibration. The best thing you can do is to have fun with this and to not take it so serious. I see some people, just in general, sp sharing spiritual ideas and they do it from such a serious place. This is very, very important. This is very, very serious. And they have that saying that, uh, what do they say? If you see an enlightened person that takes life very, very serious, go run the other direction. Because they haven't figured it out and they don't know, this is all a dream. This is all a dream. And because they take it so serious and they, they negate things and people that don't believe what they believe in and, and they, they have these serious heavy mentality that keeps them within their own belief system. So the best thing you can do and the thing that I learned in my own journey is I have to let that go and have more fun with the process. This is a temp like we're dreaming we are these little avatar bodies and the idea is to not become overly identified with it, to not eat too much heavy food and become so identified, numbing ourselves from our higher vibrational emotions. But at the same time, we can enjoy the process. You can still enjoy good food. You can still enjoy being with friends and you can enjoy this process. You don't have to just meditate in your room all day and, uh, and take it so seriously. Have fun with it. If you take it too seriously, then you're getting trapped in the lower vibrational states. So that's something that has been pivotal in my time. Be more serious, S-I-R-I, you know, the, the star system, okay? And if that triggers some belief inside of you, then be aware of that, but don't take it so serious. Just be aware of it. And be aware that a lot of that might be just the avatar ego trying to keep things in a way that it can physically understand and control. 
But the more you let go, I promise you, the more free you'll feel. The more free you'll feel and the higher you'll raise your vibration to well, that you realize, yes, we're all connected. This is more flexible than I thought. I have more abilities than I thought because I'm just having fun with this process and I'm enjoying it. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of it below. And as always, peace, much love, and namaste.